Hello YouTube, welcome to a new Unity 3D tutorial. So, we're going to try and jam pack a, a load of things in here, but you never know, it might not be. But the things I want to do is first put an underwater raft in so we can't go any further. Simple as that. Um, eventually, we're going to implement swimming, it shouldn't be too hard. You simply disable the gravity of everything and make it so you can kind of fly, basically. Add some forces to it and it works. Um, I want to push some lights over here as well. And I also want to add some life to our game by allowing them, our characters just move around, just randomly. So, well, not randomly, way pointed. But then eventually we'll do something cool, which I'll explain when we get there. So the first thing I want to do is assign the street lights, otherwise we'll, because we can't see anything over here. So I've grabbed this light here, street lights, and I'm simply going to put it, I'm going to disable all the rest. Oops. So I'm going to disable all the street lights. Just the ones we're not going to use. Boom. And then I can just play with one at once, which is what we need. So I can drag it over here. And you can see if we give it a range of, I believe it was 10,000, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Mm. So if we go to our character, or if we find weather, that'll work whether we can see what range we put it on so we can see what our lights look like when everything's on. So street lights range is a thousand. So if we go back to our street lights and set this range to a thousand, then we can see. So that is what it'll look like over here. And then we can select all of these, well, one more, set the range to a thousand. And all I'm basically doing is lining it up so our game is pretty much lit up. We can see majority of it. Select another one. And as you can see, at a range of a thousand, we don't really need any more lights than this. So we've put that there. We can pretty much delete the other two and just have three. But what I am going to do is move them all up a little bit just so it's not like so badly kind of thing. So that'll do, that's all we need. Not very many at all. So I can grab all these change the range to a zero and disable them all so that should work perfectly so now that we've done that so we've done the lights works perfect the next thing I want to do is add a kind of underwater box thing so if you do fall through the water which most people are going to do because people like swimming okay, we're gonna give them something so they can't go too far down so the best way to do it would either be a box or a plane. I'm going to use a plane because it works. And I'm just going to put bottom world. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I'm not sure. And I'm just going to um, add a new material to it. So I'm going to go textures and where's... I'll just add it to walls, create a new material inside materials because it makes sense. And I'm just going to call it bottom world. Drag it on to bottom world here. And all I'm going to do wrong one, is make it all pitch black, basically. Or should we add something? Do we have some dirt? Dirt always works good. Good dirt, there we go. And we'll tile it at 1515. And I'm just going to tint it so it's kind of bluish, dark bluish, so it looks like it's water, basically. So we can drag it down. As you can see, now it looks like you're underwater when you're looking at it, because it's all blue, like underwater would be. But I don't want it that far down because I want it so you can actually access it. But eventually our, what you might call it, um, lung capacity will kill us, kind of thing. So I'm going to make it a trigger, um, and not a trigger, so then we can just fall. And then if we just drag a character down, we should fall and hit it, pretty much. So, I'll, so we're back, and the last thing is we jump, and we notice that we have a plane stopping us, so yes. But anyway, now that we've got the blue tint on, we should be able to walk and walk and walk and walk. And hopefully we'll eventually fall as well. Hopefully. So we walk off and we fall and we go... Splat. So obviously we need to make it so the rigid body hits, but as you can see, we are now in the underworld. We can't get back up, so... We're... Oh yes, we can. We never fly up, but we're not going to. Yeah, but yeah, so... <laughs> and that's basic water what we're doing for today and what we're going to finish off now is by making our entities move around a little bit just so we've got a tiny bit of random movement we are going to use the same waypoint script but we're going to adapt it to the land version and we will eventually make it randomize um, 
which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to create a couple of um, empty game objects here, and I'm just going to put it in main positions. And by main positions, I literally mean like, well, this bridge going across this bridge. A few pe I want a few people walking across it, and I'm going to duplicate it again. And I want a few people to actually cross it. I want some people to go up here, and I want some people to go here. Simple enough. We'll add to another one. I want some people to walk up here. Not in this order either. That. So we duplicate this one. I want some people to walk over here. And I want some people to walk over here. So we've got some waypoints. So if I select them all and just type in waypoints. Waypoints. So we have our main points, and one thing we have got to look out for is that um, our characters don't go down into the floor to try and get them, because that won't work. So I'm just going to put these waypoints into the floor version, and I'm going to stick bottom world into water. Um, the reason I'm just hiding them is just so it looks cleaner. And I can also, yes, floor backup I can now officially get rid of, so that should give our performance a little more boost. and. Now that we've done that, we can start beginning programming it. And we've already got all our code, but I'm going to retype it for the people who don't watch the space one. But if you have already got the waypoint code, simply add it to your characters and then assign them some waypoints and then you'll be done. So what we're going to do is add a new script to it. So right click, create JavaScript, land enemy AI. And we're going to attach this to pretty much all of the ones except the farmer because the far or the shop because the farmer is well he's a mission base so I'm gonna attach it to all of them just like that and I'll also attach a rigid body just like that but I'll turn gravity off obviously and I'll explain why later so obviously I've attached the wrong one because I'm a genius as you all know so we'll attach that one to there and we'll open it up so I'm gonna zoom in so you can actually see and to start um, we're actually going to begin by creating the waypoint. So if you haven't ever done this script, so if you haven't watched the space tutorial, we need an array to store all the waypoints which we want our characters to be able to go to. So I'm going to type var waypoints. This will be a game object. And we'll put brackets. So we don't know how many it's got. And we also need a private variable to say which current waypoint we are on. So at default, it'll start at zero, so the character will walk to point zero. Simple as that. So we can type var current waypoint. This will be an integer equal to zero. That's easy. But you can make that private as well because the code will change that. So we can go in here. So the first thing we need is range detection. And we've done this many, many, many times. So what we need is a vector three that takes away our character, well, the character's position away from the waypoint. Really simple. So we're going to type var range vector three equals uh, waypoints, current waypoint, so it'll scan it over and over again, so 0, 1, 2, etc, minus transform.position, and that'll take it away from our position. So if you had to do on a calculator, it'd be a weird number, then then you come down here and type if range dot magnitude, 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 yeah, then that'll turn it into proper coordinates, 3D coordinates, so you can walk, well, they can walk to it. And then we put less than 5, so if it's less than 5, so they're coming up to it, you can imagine it 20 miles away, 10 miles away, 5 miles away kind of thing, it's not miles. So if they're 5 miles, which I'm using in this example, away, then we need them to go to the next waypoint. So we type current waypoint plus plus. However, if they're not at the current waypoint, so if they're less than 5, we need them to walk towards it to make it less than 5. So we type else, and then in here we'll type rigid body dot velocity equals, and then this is the weird code which I explained before, which I can't remember my explanation, but um, what it basically does is gets the range what we've had in vector 3 and then converts it to a singular number so then you can walk straight forward so it makes it good number so you put dot normal eyes times and then you put your speed of it so I'm sorry my explanation's still poor on that um, just type it and you'll just remember it I do and then we'll just say up here actually we can link it straight back to our enemy stats because if you go back to your character misc stats 
entity stats here, we've got our stats right here. So we can just come back up here, we'll type var id int, and down here we'll type game object dot find misc scripts. Yep. Uh, dot get component entity stats dot so we're in entity stats now so we're going to come into our entity stats and obviously we can't do very much at the moment because they're singular so my idea is there's poor so we're just simply going to put three so they walk in so the ID we're going to keep there for when we do fix it but what I mean is on most of our other ones like the weapons we've converted all the stats to an array so you go um, go to entities well entity stats dot entity array um, square bracket and then you put what ID it is so if I put ID 1 in here it'll go to the array and go shopkeeper but it takes a while to do so I'm not doing it here so that'll push them towards it it'll go tick 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 perfect However, what do we do when the current waypoint gets out of it? So say we give them three waypoints, then they go to four. What do we do? Because it'll throw an error. So we do a little check. So I'm going to put if current waypoint equals waypoints.length. So um, current waypoint zero, it's on waypoint zero, one, one, two, two. If it equals three, then what we're going to do is set current waypoint equal to zero again. So the loop. So they'll walk around in a loop, so it'll be really, really good and easy. And the last one is to actually make them look at their target. So we type transform dot look at waypoints dot current waypoint there. Sorry, I rushed through that bit a bit. We have got a lot to do, and I've done it all last time. So, but that's the basic script. I always, always have that one script on hand for if I ever need it. So you'll see we get one error on line 15, but I'm guessing that should disappear. We now have an error on 8, which is transform. So here we type dot transform dot position. So before we were saying get this game object and take the transform position away from it. And it's like, well, I can't do that. I need another vector 3, so v two vector 3s. So this is um, mathematics vector adding. At, at, well, addition. So if you ever have to do addition at university or something, use that code. There's your minus and plus kind of thing. Yeah. So is it saved? Yeah. We can attach it, and you will see we get another error. And that's simply because we didn't put here. So this error is basically saying it cannot look at a game object because it needs to be coordinates. So we're going to tap transform. So that way it'll look straight for that object. An easy way to fix all these transform errors is to just make you an array of transform. It works the exact same. I skip that step, but yeah. So we can now go to the first one and we can open up the floor and we can give her some waypoints. So that should be it, pretty much. All that's left is I'm going to drag my character over here so we don't have to walk the entire distance because that takes them, basically. So we're going to drop him and play. So as you can see, the characters are pretty much moving around. So we've got some random walking people. Of course he's going to try and walk over land and uh, these two are deciding to fight over the same point. But hey, it works. So we've got now some life to our game, we can eventually add it to a car, which I think is a brilliant idea for us to do now. So I'm going to quickly do that, because that'll look awesome if we've got a car driving around. So get vehicles, and we'll just get the two what I don't ever use. And I'll just go land enemy AI. And we need a speed variable, so var speed int, and we'll stick speed here. And then that should let us control the speed. We'll by default equal it to 3, so every other one's fine, but we'll change it on the car. So the ID, don't worry about it for now. And then the waypoints, we can add some waypoints to it. Like so. So now the car will drive around, and we can turn the speed up of that to 15. So it's going a bit faster. So if I play it, I'm going to leave the other one, I'm just going to leave it blank. And we can see car is flying because we haven't put it close to the floor but we will eventually so as you can see it's driving we will be able to catch it 
So hopefully it wasn't won't go through the land, otherwise we'll never catch it. Oh good, it's coming right towards us, that's what we need. So we catch it and we go boom. And as you can see of course it glitched and took us all the way back there. But yeah, so that's the basics what we're gonna do for this tutorial. So we've added some things to our game. Well, quite a few things actually. Um next tutorial I don't know what we'll do. We'll do something random. Thank you for watching, I really hope you liked it. Any issues comment below and I will gladly nicely and happily explain to you I'm not a bad guy see you next time